this program or this business model, it's about as recession proof as you could get. It's really a ticket to financial freedom, which is like, you can't have anything greater than financial freedom, in my opinion. So far with, from that very end of December to uh, the end of March, so far we're at $106,500 gross. Bro, you're killing it, man. Nice work, dude. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> just to kind of give you a premise of how these calls go, my goal on my channel is to be as uh, authentic and real with people's personal stories of how they're implementing stuff that they're finding out about on our channel. It's not always good, right? So I want to know, like, what isn't working? How do we just shoot straight? and be an advocate for the audience so that people who are maybe contemplating changes in their life can get a real sense of realistic expectations. I think setting proper expectations is a big responsibility for business owners. Sure. So we take that real seriously. I wish more businesses did because I'm a consumer first and I, I wish people shot straight. So uh, that's all I'm really sure. asking for from you. You can obviously attest to the fact that I haven't sent you any information ahead of time. I haven't sent you any prepared questions. You haven't really thought through anything. It's just two dudes being um, candid. And I just kind of want to dig in on, you know, the good and the bad. And that way people can sort and qualify themselves more easily. Because as sure. I'm sure you will explain to us, this is not a good fit for everybody, right? And no. uh, what we're here talking about today is Little Pink Houses of America again. This is a sponsor of the channel. Michael Matthew, one of the founders, is a dear friend of mine. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm really appreciative of your time to start this off. I, I know it's a lot to ask of people. And, and you're just a young kid, dude. How old are you? I'm 23. That's crazy. Yeah. So uh, fair to assume you didn't have a lot of real estate experience before you uh, decided to take this on? <clears throat> so personally, yes. Yeah, um, personal note. But real estate runs my family. So the apple didn't fall too far from the tree, if you know what I mean. Like my dad has been in real estate for probably 43 years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. and uh, but he's but he's in the traditional world of real estate. So he's been like he's a realtor. He's got his commercial license. He's an appraiser. Awesome. You know, so he kind of he kind of sticks to like the standard real estate transaction and business. Which nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know, but that's kind of that was my first job was working in this real estate business, kind of measuring houses. So I had a I have a better understanding than I would say definitely majority of people my age and even some people older that's than cool. me. But yeah, like running a real estate business or running real estate transactions myself. Yeah, this is, it was new to me for sure. That's awesome, dude. So I've done a variety of sales jobs over the last five years or so, five or six years. Most recently I did two years of door-to-door -door sales. Like I was selling like pest control. A few years ago I was in Denver selling Terminex and somehow I got a phone call from Jeff who works in the corporate office and I got in contact with him somehow and I started talking to him and he's like, oh, we got to get you out of that dreadful door-to-door, -door, man. Like you got to got to get you into in the pink houses. And I, I had no idea what this was. I was like, wow, okay, this is like a little side hustle or something. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll entertain it. You know, I paid a couple hundred dollars, I think, for the initial training. And eventually I came back home and I was like, you know, I still haven't done the training. I was like, I might as well go down to Jacksonville, Florida to see what this thing is about because I've already paid the money. So I went down there with a buddy of mine and I uh, went down to the initial three-day training and obviously had the uh, opportunity of learning really what it's about. And I was like, wow, this is really something that's like legit. That's really where I found out about it. That's where, you know, uh, my conversation with Mike started and, you know, Mike would tell you that I, as the youngest person in the company that runs a branch right now, really uh, has to get, my parents were involved with like the paperwork and they're like, I don't know if this is right and all this. So, Mike will tell you that uh, it was about a three month process of going back and forth with us on the paperwork, making edits. And I'm pretty sure I still hold the record for taking the longest to like going through the paperwork, making edits and negotiating with them. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay. So your parents are in the biz and so they must've been like, Super skeptical. Yeah, my mom is very type A. She's always been like, you know, work a corporate job for 40 years. That's that's what you do. Like you go to college, get your degree, work for, you know, work for a company for 40 years. My dad is more entrepreneurial. He went to college. Like, I was in college, you know, I was a marketing major and then eventually I dropped out because I didn't really see the value anymore. So I was making enough money where I was like, eh, I don't really see it. Uh, so I, you know, I just did sales. But yeah, she she was very skeptical. He was skeptical, but he was more willing to embrace it because of the, his entrepreneurship uh, level was higher. She's always worked for corporate America. So she was like, you're crazy. You're getting scammed. 
this is this is nonsense. What are you doing? You know, and making more money than them yet. <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, that's uh, that's what Mike was like. It's like, oh yeah, I'm like well, you know, you kind of you know got that shut up money where you can you know, like, oh, yeah, I don't hear anything now. I'm making more money than you. So everybody's always going to want to know, man. What, what what was the payday last year? Give us kind of your your uh, approximate so, numbers. I'll so I'll be blatantly honest right so i've had it for about a, a year and three months year okay. and two yeah year and three months is the exact timeline that i've had it uh when i first got in it i was trying to get the ball rolling that stopped because my sister almost died in a car accident oh no five weeks so i put the business on pause i got it restarted in the summer with a i kind of let my uh a business associate that i had in my business at the time kind of try to run it with run it for me while I was gone managing a team and it, I turned out it was not a good idea so I came back I had to redo everything so it's been about six months that I've since I've really fully restarted everything okay. so I, had, I grabbed it and I was like all right I'm gonna go every day I'm gonna put you know all my time and energy into this thing really take take advantage of it so honestly in 20 and 2019 I mean I only had one closing and it was in December so, cause I, I, you know, I really didn't get it going and I really wasn't fully locked in. So you definitely need to be fully locked in. Like this isn't something like you, you could do it as a side job. I know some of the other owners, they do it as a side thing along with their income, but to really fully take advantage of it to really see why your dividends are paying off on this. You really need to make it your, like your life basically. Like you need to really so you're, die. So you're full time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm full time. What, how, yeah. much, how much did you make on that closing? So that deal, we um, see, so we made sixteen thousand eight hundred. Sixteen eight. Mm hmm. Sixteen sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and then um, so far with from that very end of December to uh, the end of March, so far we're at a hundred six thousand five hundred dollars gross. Shut so up. Far. Mm hmm. Bro, you're killing it, man. Nice work, dude. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> who isn't this for? You've addressed the fact that this is obviously, it takes work, right? So anybody that's not willing to put in effort, don't, don't participate in this, right? No. Let's talk about somebody that is underemployed, all right? So we've got this economic problem right now, mm -hmm. worldwide problem. Yeah. So you've got a lot of people that are gonna be facing some tough transitional decisions yeah. How do you go about recommending somebody spend 30 grand or 60 grand in a business when they're not certain about where, you know, their cash flow levels are going to be? Is that somebody that we should immediately rule out in this, in this process? Or is that somebody that this becomes the solution? Uh, I'm a bit unsure on that. I think it could be either one. I think it really could be, a, it could be a solution. Uh, if you, are ready to make the leap you know you're ready to make a, a jump you know it's like it's like a calculated risk right you know it's like sitting here are you confident you're going to be able to plug back into that same job or are you going to be confident you can find other jobs similar to that that and you know you want to be complacent with that are you good with that or are you more of a type a where you play by the book you're more safe or are you willing to take a risk i've always been a risk taker i'm an opportunist at the heart so to me, as soon as I was sat down there, I was like, this is a no brainer. I got to go for this thing. Right. So how much, kinda what, how much did you spend to get in? Mine, I think I spent 25,000 at the time. Yeah. Cause that was it. Cause it was, a, cause it was a year and three months. So because there was only 22 other territories at the time and yeah. now there's, I think over 120. Yeah. So, um, okay. So if you're an opportunist, if you have a kind of a can't fail mentality where you're yeah. willing to grind it out no matter what. Dude, at what other point in history should you have more of that attitude than right now, right? I mean, it's like, if you're not willing to do whatever it takes today, you're never gonna do whatever it takes, right? Yeah, so, you're never gonna have that push to really go out there and really do it. Yeah, so I would say go for it. It's a solution, it's really a ticket to financial freedom, which is like, you can't have anything greater than financial freedom in my opinion. How, yeah. are, how are those guys professionally with um, punctuality, doing what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it? So dependability, you know, these are all check boxes that are super important to me. I only promote 
other businesses where I can expect that. So I always like to get firsthand and it's always kind of nice when uh, I can slide in without Michael on the call so that I, I can re rest assured these answers are as genuine as possible. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's a great question. To be honest, there's been some times where there's been some slip ups, you know, mm -hmm. but I understand like they're, they're a growing company right now. They're growing at a very rapid pace and sometimes they're going to be some fumbles made along the way. And they're, you know, continually adding and growing the staff and making adjustments as need be as it become very big like it is now. You know, so, uh, but for all in all, though, they are on top of it. You know, they've got some world-class coaches there. I work with a guy named Rob. He's my corporate partner. Uh, he's my corporate coach, and he's awesome. He's great. I call him probably a couple times a day, <laughs> and I really bug him. But he's awesome. He's, he gets on seller calls with me, buyer calls with me. He coaches my guys on my team. You know, he like he's willing to put in as much work as, as you are. That's how that's how little pink is in general. Like corporate's there, and like some people just don't utilize them. You know, it's a it's a toolbox. If you implement it and you utilize it, it will pay out dividends. You will see the improvements. They're there. Whatever you need, they're there. Like I don't think you could have honestly a more supportive system than they are, especially for someone that doesn't have the real estate background. Like I can go back here in the office, I can ask my dad a question, right? He has a great amount of real estate knowledge. Not everyone has that ability, right? They don't have that luxury. So that's really nice to be able to have those corporate coaches on there that have 20 to 40 years of experience and done thousands of deals. You know, they're on top of it. And it really makes your professionalism rise when you're talking to sellers and you're telling them, why should I sell your house with a view, you know? Especially with me, like, you know, because I, Look at me, I'm 23 years old. You're like, what do you know? You're just a little I've been there, man. It was so hard to be in business when I was in my early 20s. I'm like, well, I can't wait until I'm at least 30. So uh, <laughs> let, let me uh, ask you one wrap-up question here because I know that this is going to be something that's on the front of everybody's minds. Given the state of where we're at right now with this pandemic and obviously anticipating a rocky road even after the virus situation is yeah. cured. Yep how is that impacting your business? I mean, you're crushing the first few months of the year. So are you yeah. seeing that this is actually uh, one of those biz ops that truly is sustainable and viable and profitable even during a downturn? Or are you concerned that the downturn is actually going to be negatively affecting your business? Sure. So to answer your question like this, I think that this program or this business model, it's about as recession proof as you could get that being said though this thing is a whole other animal right like this is not a normal like recession that we're dealing with this is like a pandemic worldwide that's really just crushing everything so yeah it definitely is it definitely has affected us some it's affecting us as far as as many sellers wanting to interact with us so as far as sellers even wanting to sell their house but that being said we're still getting business done all it means is that we just have to make more that many more phone calls we have to follow up even more than we usually do, you know? So it's just, right. just more work on our end, but can we show get it done? Business. Yeah, show me one business, right? That that doesn't have that exact same situation right now, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you got a lot of wisdom for a kid that was uh, 11 years old during the last downturn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I um, I don't know. It's just my, I probably my my uh, family just kind of drilling that into me. It's just kind of how I was raised and yeah, yeah always working hard so. well dude i can't thank you enough for your time man i really really appreciate it i'm super stoked for your successes i mean nothing makes me happier than seeing some guy in his early 20s that's knocking it out of the park already with entrepreneurship so way to go man i know you're going to be inspiring a lot of people on our channel and when you get the time go over there and uh you know check out some of our content too you'll you'll see your uh, your face on there soon enough <laughs> all right man i appreciate matthew it's been a pleasure man you too, Austin. Thank you so much, man. I can't wait to check in with you again down the road if, that, if you're open to it. I'm always open for it. Yeah, please do. Yeah. All right, All man. Right. Stay safe. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Appreciate you. it. Bye.